So I've been waiting a long time to do one of these and Disney can't say a thing. So here's the deal guys, I've been wanting to make Mickey Mouse signs and Disney type signs for a long time. They're not all available, but from my understanding as of January 1st, 2024, Steamboat Willie is now public domain. Uh, you can check that out, go to Google, Wikipedia, check that out. So that means that the image of Steamboat Willie, you can use as making whatever products you want. You can make them for gifts for yourself or you can make them to sell because it's public domain. So everything we're using today we'll put a links in the description below let's get after it for this project we're using a piece of 12 by 24 blue pine that we glued up quite a while ago we just never ended up using it now we decided to put a one inch frame all the way around this thing so dad is using our one inch yardstick to make a box that way he can use those lines to get his measurements. Now for the Steamboat Willie image, we're using our inkjet transfer process. And if you guys haven't seen that, I'll put a link in the description below and also a little card up here in the corner and you can go check it out because that's pretty involved. Now for the lettering, we're using our two inch and our inch and a half fatty font. And dad's also using the layout arch to get a nice arch on the top line. When you're using that, what you really want to do is you want to make sure you measure either from the top of the board or the bottom of the board and make sure that both sides are the same measurement. Because even when you do your layout arch, it's really easy to get it crooked. So you have to make sure that both sides are completely even. Once he has the top line done, then he's going to center the bottom line on the top line and make sure everything is nice and symmetrical. Then all you got to do is spray it with your primer. Now this is pine, so we had to be real careful not to overspray, otherwise it will bleed. Dad had a piece of paper with the artwork put on it already, and that's what he used to make his marks. So now he's cutting the freezer paper to size and put it on those marks, and then he's just gonna tape it down. We use these little yellow plastic spatulas to press the ink into the board, and it works great because you can press nice and hard over and over again to make sure you get a good transfer, and it doesn't rip the paper. Once your transfer is on the board, it's a good idea to put one or two really light coats of clear on here because as you're carving and your hands are moving across the board, it could smudge on you. So hey guys, we know that there's a lot of you that are seeing this video and you aren't subscribers. We would love it if you would subscribe. We're trying to hit a goal of 100,000 subscribers in the year of 2024. You could do us a big favor by hitting that subscribe, click that little bell icon, and we'll keep doing our job and coming up with really cool stuff to show you. So we started out with a carving liner at an eighth of an inch deep. This bit is perfect for this particular artwork. A lot of the old school artwork like this has really thin lines. And if you were to try to do this with your profile bit, even a brand new one, it might not look right because the deeper you go, the wider the cut is. Now dad's gonna do everything he needs to do with a carving liner, but he's not gonna do all of it because the problem with this bit, well, not the problem, but kind of a side effect, because it's a single flute fine tip bit, it doesn't hold its edge quite as well as the profile bit does. Now when you're doing thin lines like this, you kind of have a couple different options. You can either go right on the line and split the difference, or you can go outside or inside the line, right? It's almost like you have to choose, but it doesn't have to stay consistent. There's a lot of areas where if there's a thin piece that's gonna be outset, like say underneath Mickey's arm, Dad made that a little bit bigger because the way the artwork is, it is super thin. And with pieces like that, you really take a risk of it chipping out during the sanding process. But it worked out really well. And remember, this is all your interpretation. So if you can't get right on the line, there's not a whole lot of people that are gonna notice. Now we're switching to our profile bit at an eighth of an inch deep. Now this is kind of an old profile bit that dad's using. And one thing to remember is that 
as your bits get older and you sharpen them over and over, you lose the finer point. So over time, once you're grinding that metal away to sharpen them, then it's not quite as fine as it used to be. So even though dad's only using it at an eighth of an inch deep right now, it's still cutting pretty wide. And dad's using this to get all the stuff in the artwork that's big enough to use the profile bit on. Now we didn't record it, but once dad was done with this step, he actually dropped his router bit to a quarter of an inch deep and went back around. That way he gives himself a little bit more room for the bigger areas that he has to go in and take out with a 90 degree bit. And you'll see that here in a few minutes. Just a quick point here, it's always a good idea when you're doing artwork to have an actual picture of what you're carving. Don't use your phone, but have an actual picture because as you're carving, it's really easy to lose track of those lines. Now dad's gonna do the wording and he's using the profile bit again at an eighth of an inch deep. Now normally we would go a little bit deeper, probably about 3 16 but because we were somewhat limited on room with the layout, we ended up putting the letters a little bit closer together. You can see right there where the S and the T almost hit. So if he were to do it all the way right off at a quarter of an inch deep or 3 16 then he's kind of taking a risk of cutting off pieces of certain letters. We're using our fatty font for this and it's actually perfect because the fatty font is kind of a bubbly, cartoonish looking font. We were thinking about doing something that's similar to the Disney font, but Disney does not mess around. In fact, I think they're pretty upset that the Steamboat Willie copyright expired. So we figured, ah, let's not take a chance. We decided to go with a fatty font and it really fit this sign perfect. So there's an area where there's a knot and it's between the I and the L. So dad's actually carving on the edge of a pretty good size knot. If you can avoid this during layout, you definitely want to try, but sometimes there's just no avoiding it unless you use a different board. So if you're carving through a knot, just be careful because number one, it can chip out and number two, it might have a different density than the rest of your board. Now that all the detail work is done, Dad's taking that same profile bit and he's dropping it down to a quarter of an inch. And what he's doing is he's going around everything he just carved to give himself a little bit more room for the 90 degree bit. Now, for the longest time, I fought this step. I, For me, I saw it as a waste of time when I didn't have to do that. I can get pretty close with a 90 degree bit, but the reality is, the more room you give yourself, the less careful you have to be when you go in and take all of that wood out. So it actually saves you time, which is kind of counterintuitive. An extra step saves you time. But trust me on this, because like I said, I fought it forever and it works so much better than trying to get really close to your letters with that wide cutting bit. Now it's time for the 90 degree bit. Now we're using this at a quarter of an inch deep. This is designed to take out a ton of wood, which it does. So dad's using this bit and he's gonna go and just follow the contour of the letters and make a cloud around the letters. Now you can do whatever shape you want. We just kind of like the cloud and it really works for this particular sign. What's kind of difficult sometimes is when you have multiple lines kind of trying to figure out where you want to carve, what the contour should look like, and then trying to make a match. So it's a good idea, especially if you're first starting out, to take a pencil and draw your line first. For me, I need a line to follow. Now for the cloud, not as much because I've done it quite a bit, but when I'm doing anything else, I really like to have a line. Now that the cloud is there, dad's just going to go in and he's just going to do kind of random patterns, circles, or whatever, and he's going to take out all of that extra wood that's in there and also get the rest of the parts and the artwork that he couldn't get with the profile bit. Once all the carving's done, now it's time to spray. 
Now when it comes to something that you're doing with a carving liner like the steering wheel or captain's wheel or whatever it is that Steamboat Willie's holding, it's really easy to try to overspray to get that spray in those fine lines. But you want to be super careful with this, especially with pine. Because if you put too much spray on there, it's going to bleed and there ain't no sanding it out. While the primer was drying, we cut the pieces for our frame out of a 3 quarter inch redwood picket. We cut two pieces at 24 inches and then two pieces at 11 and 13 sixteenths. When you're doing miters like we're going to do, you want to make sure you get it as precise as you can. Once we had our pieces cut, then we just cut a 45 degree angle to the top corner and we made sure to do a dry fit before any glue got involved. That way there were no mistakes to be made. Once our pieces were cut, our primer was dry and ready to be sanded. So we used our disc sander with a 60 grit disc and we got off say 90-95% of the black. Then we went back with a 120 grit on a random orbital and we really took our time on this because we wanted it nice and smooth and we wanted to get out any remnant of black from that white board that we possibly could. Now we're ready for the frame. So we attached the frame with glue and little brad nails. Well, I believe we used inch and an eighth brad nails. So we put the glue on there and we got it nice and flush and we used these spring clamps because we didn't want to have the nail marks through the top. So we flipped it over and we actually rested it on another little piece you can see right there and we just nailed it from the back. You got to be careful with this because number one, you don't want to nail through a knot, which dad did a good job missing there. And number two, you want to make sure that you're nailing the frame. It's really easy to kind of miss and go a little bit too far inside. And then you got a nail sticking through your sign. And that's the last thing anybody wants. Now that the frame's complete, it's time to finish sand. So we did this with a 220 on the random orbital, and we also used this little sanding sponge from Clean Sport, and man, these things work really well. We wanted to use that on the inside edge because we didn't want to mess up the sign, but it still had to have a rounded finished look. These sanding sponges are awesome. If you guys haven't used them, I recommend them. The only problem is they don't last all that long because that sharp edge will actually cut through the sponge. And the reason Dad looks like the Unabomber is because it's like 5 degrees outside. It is cold. And now, my favorite part of every project. Using our Rust-Oleum Clear and seeing how it makes that grain pop. I love the contrast between the black and the white of the board and the nice clean redwood. Man, this thing looks awesome. So I'm super happy with the way this came out. We decided we were gonna make the frame black, but we decided to leave it the regular redwood color. And I think it's a great contrast to the blue pine. Again, this is something that I've been wanting to do for a long time. I think this would be perfect for kids' rooms, nurseries, or even if you've got somebody that is a huge Disney fan. This would be a great gift or an item to actually sell. Again, I'm not a lawyer, guys, so you know, don't take my word for it. Go do your own research. This is just my understanding. I had a blast. I think it came out great. If you guys are doing a, a Steamboat Willie sign, we'd love to see what you guys come up with. Thanks so much for watching. We love you. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.